Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore how you can create professional studio lighting uh, for your scenes and composite your characters into images in Photoshop. So basically we're going to be taking this character, this dude, this a professional stern looking businessman right here, we're going to be taking him and compositing him into this image that I have prepared in Photoshop right here. So in order to do this, we first need to get the lighting correct, uh, accurate to our, uh, for our environment. So let's take a look at the lighting in this uh, image right here. So it's coming generally from the right hand side. Okay, so it's coming from the right hand side. You see it's reflecting off the back of this chair right here and on the side of this uh, chair over here. So we want to create a uh, lighting situation in iClone where the light is coming from the right hand side. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Indigo Sun and Sky preset. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lights in our scene. Uh, you've got the default key and rim lights in iClone. What I'm going to do is take the rim light disable that one. We're going to take the key light and I'm going to use my forward slash key and I'm going to move the light to the source of the light to maybe somewhere over here. So that's going to be you know fairly accurate to what we have in our uh, scene that we want to composite into. Okay so we get a situation like that. That looks okay. Let's go over to indigo and make sure we have indigo sun and sky selected aligned to the key light right here and that's the key light that we just uh, modified right there. Make sure that our key light is turned off, the iClone light is turned off, and let's give this a quick render and see what kind of result we get. And see how well it might composite into our uh, the background that we want it to composite to. Okay, so you see we get some nice, you know, nice lighting along the side of his face right there and along this side of his body. However, maybe the lighting on the left-hand side is a little bit too dark because if we look at our image, you know, we have some fairly, you know, decent ambient lighting in this scene. I don't think the left side of his uh, uh, body would be that dark in this scenario. They'd be, they'd be like bouncing off the ground, bouncing off the roof and everything like that. Unfortunately, in our indigo render, we don't have anything for the light to bounce off of. So what we can do is we can use a quick little uh, emissive light to create ambient light coming from his right hand side over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is create an uh, ambient light, uh, rather an emissive light, in uh, iClone. And we're going to translate that over to Indigo. Uh, actually, let's keep a render of that going in the background just so we can compare the two. I should have closed that one. All right, back in iClone. We'll keep that rendering in the background there. I'm going to just create a simple, very simple uh, primitive. I'm going to go to my Content tab under Props, under uh, Props over here, go to 3D Blocks. And I'm just going to import in a simple block, uh, box. We can just double click that, and uh, our box should appear right there. Let's change this uh, using the R hot key. Let's change it to maybe the the, the size of a uh, you know some sort of studio light that we might have. Uh, we can put it out a little bit, something like that. I think that's looking fine and dandy. So what we want to do is we want to have this light um, on positioned on the right side of our character's body. So let's move it over to that uh, area over there. And uh, what we can do as well is we can create a spotlight. So let's go ahead and create light and a spotlight. And let's align that spotlight to our uh, cube there, X, Y, and Z. And we want our spotlight to look at uh, our character. So let's go to modify, uh, whoops, press OK first. Go to modify and have our spotlight look at the character. So pick target, pick his head. There we go. And let's take the uh, our other light, our indigo emissive light, and let's take that and have it look at our character as well. Because I'm going to show you why in just a sec here. If we have that look at the character, let's choose a different axis. Uh, I think the Y axis should do. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's the X axis. There we go. So what happens now is if I you know move this around like that, the large face of our uh, of our light there is going to be shining directly on our character's head no matter which angle we have. So that's a useful little tip there and generally keep this behind the uh, spotlight. If you want to be a bit more accurate you can also change the pivot point for that object as well into the middle and then we get you know this sort of uh, it's a bit more accurate. Okay so let's position that. The reason I have this spotlight over here is I'm going to press the F8 hotkey and it's going to give me my uh, mini viewport here. Oops we don't want to dock that right now. Bring it over here and expand it. And let's change our camera to this, this camera view which I have already set up. So the reason I have that spotlight there is because I want to simulate you know, what we are expecting to look, uh, expecting to achieve in Indigo. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, main, uh, main window here. And I can 
just press the G hotkey to get a direct overhead view of my character. And we can move this uh, light around. And you can see in the preview window, the results after we move this light around from here to here. So maybe something like, I think this position here might be okay. It's on the, directly on the right side of his face. And let's take that, uh, um, our emissive light in indigo and we'll bring it over there as well. Okay, so maybe a little bit further back. Uh, we can take the uh, spotlight further back there as well. It's not gonna have much of an effect. But generally, this is the uh, sort of lighting result that we're gonna go for. So we can close that down and we can just disable our spotlight altogether. We can just uh, make it invisible and disable it right there. But we need to assign emissive lighting properties to this indigo light right here. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go over to my indigo tab right here and we're going to, at the very top, just select base emission. Now, base emission at about this distance, maybe we're about uh, um, you know, two grid lengths away. What I can do is uh, just change the base emission to something like uh, maybe 15,000. Okay, we don't want it to be too bright because it, after all, it is just simulating light bouncing off of uh, other objects in the uh, area. And then let's go back to our uh, camera view right here. And obviously we don't have the uh, um, light spotlight on right now. Let's go ahead and give this one a quick render and see the result that we get in uh, Indigo. I think we're already rendering this one over here. We'll probably just stop this one. A nice clean render right there of our uh, character's face. And we should see the other one appear momentarily. All right, so now we get this uh, you know, nice equal lighting. We have the lighting coming from the uh, emissive light on the right side of our character's body. It's our left side, the right side of his body. I know I've been using them interchangeably in this tutorial here, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty accurate as to you know what we want to achieve. If we wanted to darken that a little bit, we can do so. Uh, we can find our box. Uh, now in iClone, uh, the light is actually called box 001. All right, so let's pretend box 001 is a light and we can go to uh, Indigo here and we can just type in box in the search field. We find the material right here and then we can go down to like the uh, base emission values right here, uh, right? And just just uh, click on this swatch right here. And we can change the gain right here. Uh, we can change it to something like uh, you know fifty thousand. Right there. Now you can see we have a much brighter light coming from that direction. Obviously, that's not the result that we want. But I just I'm just kind of trying to show you how you can uh, in Indigo in real time you can really adjust this value right here. So you know we can change it down to like twelve thousand. And get a much darker look than we had before. I think we had about 15 or 16,000 before. Let's try 16,000. Um, okay, that's looking okay. And zoom in a little bit. Maybe we need to adjust this emission value as well. Something like five. There you go. You can also use this emission value down here as well. Uh, let's just keep that at one. And uh, this base emission, we'll use that value. It could stand to be lit up a little bit, I think. Well, you know what, we'll keep it at 16,000 because we have pretty even light on uh, both sides of the face, maybe even a little bit darker. I think we can do 14,000. There we go, we'll close that down. Okay, so you may think, oh, that's a little bit too dark, you know, for the scene that we want to composite into. Well, thankfully, we have the ability to add filters and do some tone mapping and stuff like that as well. So if we take this uh, uh, image right here, let's go actually go into Photoshop and see the image we're going to composite into. And then we'll uh, load this one up. There's our original one. We'll just go ahead and stop that for now. We don't need that any longer. Uh, this one right here, um, let's zoom in on our character. So about right here, you know, if he's in the foreground of this image, there's not going to be too much light unless we have light uh, facing our character. So what we can do is we can, you know, modify the uh, EV and the film ISO. So we can pump up the film ISO a little bit and the EV in tandem and the EV is fairly sensitive. So just keep that in mind. Uh, take the EV down. So maybe uh, a lighting level like this. I think we'll just mess around with the ISO a bit more there. I like the ISO a bit more than the, uh, okay, we'll try and work with something like that. Okay, and then you can do that and you can also, you know, use different filters as well, like we cover in other tutorials. Uh, I believe we had the, uh, this is the uh, DS315, DS, DSCS315 right there. So this one, this one's looking fairly decent. And again, we can 
modify the film ISO and EV adjust. We can do that later in Photoshop as well once we uh, export this image. So again, we've been rendering for about uh, a minute here. Let's go ahead and just save this out. And I'll just call it uh, test right here under my tests folder that I have set up here. Go ahead and save that. And then what we can do is open that up in Photoshop. So let's go to that uh, same test folder that I have on my desktop there. And we'll just load in this uh, test image right here. Now, this exported as a transparent image. And the reason for that is because if I go back into iClone, in my indigo settings, what I chose is foreground alpha. So foreground alpha is going to take out the entire background. So we're not going to have any background at all. In Photoshop, now all I need to do is control A, select all, control C, go to my image right here and control V. And we can place this, uh, use the V hotkey to place it wherever we want, somewhere like that. Control T we can use to uh, 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 change the size. And I'm going to hold shift and click and drag and we can make it a little bit larger if we want something like this, press enter. And then we have this character composited in our image right there. So that's looking pretty cool. And then again, you can adjust the brightness and uh, all the other values of this uh, layer as well. We've, uh, we've loaded it in as a separate layer. You can go to this one over here as well and control V, paste that one in. Uh, control T, maybe resize it slightly, make it a little bit larger. And again, we'd probably want to wait for a, a better quality render uh, but, you know, just importing this in, it already looks quite nice. And so we've successfully composited this uh, realistic character creator, professional outfits character uh, from character creator into our scene. And the compositing looks fairly good, you know, considering we did this in uh, less than a couple of minutes, uh, with a, less than a couple of minutes of rendering going on as well. Um, the lighting in this one's fairly a fairly similar uh, situation. So, uh, you know, we still have light coming in from the back right there and from the side. So that's really about all I wanted to show in this tutorial, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Just wanted to show you using the uh, uh, emissive lights to kind of complement the indigo sun and sky and to create the best composite possible for, for lighting uh, to bring your character into a, uh, an image. So thanks so much for watching. Check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll see you in the next video.